welcome back to the gerbil vine. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Bex and I make videos on proper gerbil care in hopes of educating and enriching the lives of gerbils all over the world. It's a well-known fact that I don't support the stigma of gerbils as starter pets. They really are a very particular species of animal and one that I strictly believe should not be bought without doing um, your own independent research first. Gerbils really do need so much more than what is often advertised in a small pet store care guides and what you can quickly find off of the first couple hits on Google. Gerbils are very sensitive and small creatures and today we're going to be going over some common gerbil issues as well as things that you can do to avoid or work through these problems. So let's begin with the common issue of my gerbils run away from me or they're scared of me. Gerbils are a prey animal. This means that they are predisposed to be nervous, cautious, and wary of situations and objects including your hands. Gerbils are skittish and can be very easily spooked. While this does vary gerbil to gerbil in extremity, it can happen at times even when you're not paying attention. In the morning, if I start stretching before I get out of bed, like a big arm lift like that, um, the gerbils, you'll just hear like the sound of them scattering on the topper trying to get back down to safety and you may even hear like a thumping sound. Um, if you don't know, thumping is what gerbils do when they are spooked. It's sort of like how they warn um, the other members of their clan that there's something dangerous or there's something that is making them nervous, so to be careful. Uh, but even though I've had them for over a year and even though nothing's happened to them that makes them feel like they should be scared or nervous if my arms are just up in the air, uh, they still do get super spooked. Gerbils are naturally wary in order to protect themselves. So what can you do about this? Well, number one, don't take it personally. Sometimes gerbils just get spooked. It may be nothing that you're doing wrong. Working with gerbils and bonding with them can be a lengthy process depending on many things, including the gerbils' personalities, but it really does take a good set of patience and there really is like no set timeline on when you should be fully bonded to your gerbils. Like I mentioned earlier, different gerbils have different personalities and this plays a huge role in temperament and how fast that they take to you. Talking next to the tank often, having a phone call in the room, are things that you can do that will help them get used to your voice. Spend time with your hands in the tank as much as you possibly can and offer them treats without always trying to pick them up or scoop them up. Many gerbils can recognize specific sounds, including but not limited to a shaking treat jar. Also, be aware of your gerbils' feelings. This may sound silly, but when you're a really small animal, life looks a little bit different. How would you want to be treated if you were a tiny animal? Understanding your animal is 100% part of the bonding process. Gerbils fighting over items. If you notice your gerbil squabbling over a certain item, it's important to stop this behavior before it escalates into something more serious. For example, if your gerbils are both trying to use the wheel at the same time, it's likely time to invest in a second wheel. The same goes for any hideouts, water bottles, or bowls, uh, chew toys, etc, etc. You don't want your gerbils to get to the point where they start to claim or defend items as their own, as this unlocks a whole new world of crazy in the gerbilverse. Declaning can be the most unfortunate ending to your gerbils fighting over items. So if you notice any sort of blocking, chasing, guarding, or gerbils claiming items, your best bet would be to double up on everything. If you have a food bowl, I actually recommend that you stop using a food bowl and instead switch to scatter feeding, which is exactly what it sounds like. You scatter food around the tank. Uh, this way there's not one set location that your gerbils can guard or claim or stop the other one from eating from because they all have a fair opportunity to come across food on their own um, in various areas in your tank. Gerbils sneezing or scratching. Gerbils have very sensitive upper respiratory systems. <laughs> they can be easily agitated by particles, dust, and debris. And every gerbil is different in the severity of their reactions. I recently reviewed a new type of aspen wood bedding that I highly recommend for gerbils with extreme sensitivities. As the dust-free claim on the bag is something that I have found to be true um, using it in my tank these past couple of weeks. If you notice that your gerbil is irritated by something or is like excessively scratching, has a red or runny nose, or even water eyes, this is something that you should seek medical attention for immediately. But also consider the type of bedding that you're using. Many paper beddings claim to be safe and dust free, but it's not always the case. One of our awesome subscribers here on the gerbil vine that has a few gerbils that suffer from sensitivity issues, and their solution is to use shredded paper towels and cardboard, which actually proves to eliminate the dust issue. Since gerbils have such tiny lungs, inhaling too many dust particles is certainly a cause for concern. So what can you do about this? 
Well, number one would be to only use some of the beddings that we all know are already safe for gerbils, such as the white paper clean and cozy bedding or natural care fresh or even the colored care fresh beddings. And for wood bedding to stick to aspen shavings. Um, even then though, you should be careful on which brand of aspen you are using because like I mentioned in a previous video, the quality control for aspen can kind of be all over the place depending on the brand. Uh, so just make sure that you're using safe, dust-free bedding, nothing that is scented or has any sort of like extreme odor control or anything like that. A common question I find being asked all the time for gerbils all over the world is, is my tank big enough? Well, this depends on many things. There are no concrete housing guidelines for where, for gerbils for where I live in Canada. Um, most places that I've researched do recommend a 10 gallon per gerbil rule. However, my own personal recommendation would be a 40 gallon tank minimum for a pair of gerbils. This would equal out to 20 gallons per gerbil. However, if you've seen my video on comparing gerbil tank sizes, I compared the 10, 20, and 40 gallon tank. You'll know that you can't fit the proper sized items in either a 10 or a 20 gallon. Um, so that's one of the reasons why I don't actually advise that you house a single gerbil in a 20 gallon. So I would advise a minimum of a 40 gallon tank for a pair and um, bigger is obviously always better if you can do it, but that would be my minimum recommendation. And after that, I advise you to keep the 20 gallon per gerbil rule depending on how many gerbils you choose to add, although a pair is the best option. Uh, many people have had success with larger groups of gerbils, but in my own opinion, I think the bad outweighs the good in that situation and the potential for what could go wrong. So that concludes our video on common gerbil issues and if you're feeling inspired, drop us a comment down below letting us know what you thought about today's video. We have a couple cool new videos coming up in the next little while including a, a gerbil haul with many supplies from Etsy, um, some from the UK, and then a bunch of really cool um, Halloween themed decor as well as at the end of October a special Halloween gerbil themed video. Essentially, we'll be doing a Halloween tank decorating video. As always, thank you all so much for watching this video today. Make sure that you like and subscribe so that you never miss our uploads. We hope you have the best day ever and we'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye.